You know, the, the number of poor people in the world who depend on livestock, it's really enormous. It's 600 million people. And livestock really plays an enormous role in their lives. You know, they depend on their animals for so much. You know, it's food and income, it's fuel and fiber and fertilizer for their fields. And without the livestock, they cannot exist. And the 600 million people, there's such huge diversity. It includes pastoralists, you know, those people whose whole identity and culture is based on their association with animals and who keep large herds of camels, cattle, sheep, goats, or even yaks. But it also includes smallholders who may only have a, you know, a couple of cows or one or two goats. My organization helps these people. We help them to make the most out of their livestock so that they can earn more money and climb out of poverty and at the same time contribute to food security locally and globally. So you may be wondering what help livestock keepers needs. Well, sometimes not a lot, because they already know and have developed a lot of experience of keeping livestock in difficult environmental conditions. Actually, they know better than anybody else. And they also have developed livestock breeds, which are perfectly adapted to these situations. However, what they are lacking is access to animal health care. They're losing very rapidly the rights to their pasture land. And they also have difficulties accessing markets. But if we improve these things, if we ensure access to animal health care, to pastures and to markets, then a lot can be gained. And I can give you a perfect example. In Rajasthan, in India, we're working with camel breeders to set up a system where they can reliably obtain good medicines for their camels, where they can exert their community rights over their pastures and where we're also helping them to develop a range of new and exciting products from the camel, such as shawls, soaps, and even stationery. So the results, the camels are healthier, the herds are bigger, and the families are better off. But our work is about more than medicines and markets. Our work is about making sure that livestock keepers have a voice in policy processes and that they are aware of their rights. There actually are several United Nations backed international legal frameworks such as the Convention on Biological Diversity and the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples which support some of the rights and needs of small-scale livestock keepers. Unfortunately, they're not being used at the moment. But livestock keepers themselves have, in a really intensive, long-lasting, grassroots process that took place in Asia, in Africa, in Latin America, and in Europe, identified the kind of rights and the support that they need. And they've identified a bundle of rights, which is called livestock keepers' rights, which actually relates very well to those UN declarations that I mentioned earlier. And Policymakers even have endorsed the principles of livestock keepers' rights, but we're not yet at the stage where they are actually formalized. So it will require some more advocacy and lobbying to get to that stage. It's a serious mistake that international policy and government practice sideline and ignore these amazingly efficient livestock production systems and instead favor the, the large-scale intensive high input livestock production systems. On the positive side, I've seen how respect and recognition for small scale livestock keepers has really increased in recent years. And we've built a network of civil society, of livestock keepers and of scientists that agree that there are sustainable alternatives to the so-called industrial livestock production mode. Alternatives which improve and strengthen the situation of small-scale livestock keepers, which promote animal welfare, which sustain biodiversity, and that produce healthy and delicious food. So that's what the League for Pastoral Peoples is about. We work at the grassroots level, and we also work at the global policy level. Let me leave you with one final thought. 
The world needs livestock. There are 600 million poor livestock keepers in the world. Shouldn't we make sure that they get their rights and that they get all the help that they need?